Hello and welcome to MICA's program on workplace violence. Uh, this is module eight and the focus of this module is documenting the difficult situation. Our objectives are to uh, develop an understanding of importance of documentation and second to understand that learning how to be a better documenter is kind of a fluid process and requires education and training on an ongoing basis. And then making sure that your staff are aware of what kinds of situations need to be documented and how best to do that following a difficult situation. And so when we think about what needs to be documented and sh who should document, when I, I think about the what, I want to talk about the relevant information, the facts of the situation, uh, and the importance of who has to do with everyone playing a role. And with your EMR and your <clears throat> system for making appointments, are those two in sync? Uh, can a physician see that uh, the front office has had a difficult situation with a patient and they've made a note about it? Can the scheduler make a note that the rest of the team can see so that everyone is aware uh, that the patient had had a difficult situation. Sometimes by the time the patient gets to the professional care staff in, in, the, in the back office, they may have cooled down and no one may be aware that they were quite uh, disgruntled and aggressive with the staff at the front office. In risk management, we like to say that that medical record is the witness that never dies and never lies. Uh, what you put in there is what will remain there for a very, very long time. Uh, the situation of ensuring that you have that proper record keeping, even when the situation is difficult, is really important. And the kinds of things we'll talk about in this session the difficult encounters could be from an intruder situation, a violent situation, a domestic violence overflow into your practice, but the same principles hold true for even, uh, you know, a difficult situation should there have been a mistake with a medication or another mishap. So I'd like to begin by saying that really when staff are thinking about what to write, they really need to think about the fact that they're sort of creating an autobiography of that individual. Uh, they tell the whole story. You can't say, well, I'll, I'll have 10 chapters here. I think I just won't write anything for chapter six or seven. Uh, really focus on everything that happened in the relationship with that patient. And really thinking about the fact that if something didn't go well, you know, being cautious about how you document it, but also making sure there is a, that message in the chart so that it communicates to the other caregivers in your practice. And a simple acronym is basically factual, accurate, complete, and timely. And it pretty much sums it up for me from the standpoint that you really have to stick to the facts and really have to uh, think about how you might word it. Direct quotes from the patient or the family are really a nice way to approach it. Make sure that you identify who is being quoted. It might be patient states, and then use the quotes around the words that, that you're going to share. And really try to document from the concerns as to how the patient is expressing it, but really stay focused also on the second part to documentation is writing down what it was that you did about the scenario or the concern. You know, accurate really focuses on the difference between objective and subjective. And those are the things that essentially, if you're, you know, measuring vital signs, you know, it's pretty much, um, you know, data that could be reproduced. Uh, what you observe becomes really important without passion, passing judgment. You know, if I write in the chart that a patient needs a bath, may sound somewhat judgmental, but if I actually write patient's hair is oily and has a strong scent of body sweat, is really more descriptive of what uh, the, the actual experience is with that patient. And then to try with your words to avoid placing blame. When we think about complete, uh, we really want to think about as, as complete as you can possibly pull that story together with your words, uh, but really think about the fact that, um, you know, when, when a patient is being abusive or threatening, uh, we, we again want to be cautious about labeling them as such. We want to really describe the behavior, you know, you know patient, you know, approach the desk, um, raised voice, uh, using profanity, 
is a bit more descriptive than simply stating that the patient is abusive. And again, down the road when you, you might be asked about this scenario, those words that are written in that chart will be the guide uh, and, and essentially will help kind of, um, you know, clarify what, what was happening that day when our memories have um, maybe not been as clear years later. The timely part is really a critical component and your practice probably has a policy that all documentation for today's visits should be done within a specific time frame. Uh, but again, making sure that that kind of documentation, specifically when there's an issue with a patient uh, event or an intruder uh, that happens to also be a patient, uh, being able to ensure there's information about that so the next group of staff that interact with that patient will, will have the information they need to keep safe. And again, uh, the objective versus subjective. Uh, you know, a sub subjective sample, I've included one here. Uh, some of the things that you, you might, uh, you know, say that uh, might not be quite as factual, uh, more of an opinionated. Uh, writing in the chart, he smells bad today, alcohol maybe, uh, is very um, opinionated uh, versus when you really look, you know, an objective sample of some of the things that might have encountered with this patient, you know, that he arrived at the office, he alleged the staff weren't calling him back, he states, I am sick of you not calling me back. Um, you writing the words, his tone was harsh, he used profanity, clenched his fist as he pounded on the front counter. So again, this type of uh, sample will kind of give you an idea. Uh, you may be better skilled at making it less wordy, but again, just an example for you to um, take a look at. And then further in this example, I do want to call out that we shouldn't hesitate to call the police if we have some concerns. Uh, if the patient has made some threats, we want to note that in the chart. You know, when he says, I will follow you out to the car, do you do what I'm telling you to do already? Uh, and, and because of him being threatened, threatening and menacing, being able to note what time the police department arrived, um, maybe he had to be escorted off the, present, uh, the premise. And then again, a termination letter uh, with senior leadership looking at that scenario and making that decision. And when we think about, you know, the kinds of things, again, with somebody who is, is rude or, or just challenging to deal with, a lot of times we want to make sure that we're not confusing providing good customer service with providing good safe care. And there's a point at which uh, you want to ensure that you have a bit of zero tolerance uh, for the scenario. Uh, behavior such as this, that's what's described with this image, is also uh, the kind of behavior that can be infectious. Uh, you might have another patient who's, you know, sitting in the exam room who's anxious, but they also can become, you know, disruptive or have acting out behavior. Uh, so again, uh, making sure that everyone is safe and in approaching some solutions uh, and having that response plan activated will be important for all of the patients. And just as a, as a final note about documentation, I, I put this example down here of uh, something that I read years ago in a chart. And the nurse, uh, my nickname barely enough, RN, simply because the actual situation here was a little bit more involved. The patient actually threw their, their tray, you know, out at the, the staff, uh, took the mayo stand and, and flung it across the room um, through urine. Uh, and when you think about that type of situation, this particular patient was a little bit more than just upset and being mean to staff. The being mean to staff is, is really more opinionated and less factual. And again, uh, as far as the swear words and the different things that, you know, patients might say, uh, some practices would prefer to keep the, the comments a little bit more generic. It might simply state patient uses profanity uh, with staff at the front office. Uh, some practices are okay with writing the actual words that the patient uh, has indicated, but it gives you an idea about the tone of the situation, the kinds of response uh, that the patient was giving you to any, any directions or uh, requests for a, you know, a change in behavior. It also tells you more about the mood of the patient and then what the staff observed, what they heard and how this scenario, when a patient becomes aggressive, 
actually you know becomes disruptive and is actually a barrier to safe practice and then finally provides for an opportunity for what our response is to that behavior and so in summary documenting a difficult and encounter and highlighting the staff and the patient's experience in a factual way is essential step actually in the caregiving process and no different than learning how to start an IV or to learn how to draw blood in a better fashion improving our documentation uh, can also be improved with training experience and practice and so and finally there's an example here of you know a scenario of um, a very difficult situation between um, a patient uh, a family member and the staff and so we include that here just as another example of what that documentation might look like and again reminding all that the medical record is a legal document provides content that is a means of communication between caregivers allows to keep the information as simple as possible and again uh, rationale for how you reacted to the situation and the timeliness in your response for the documentation itself and again we thank you for your participation <music>